My name is um, Emma Cunningham. I'm a researcher at the Institute of Evolutionary Biology at the University of Edinburgh. I supervise PhD students, but I'm also the interest in the Institute's um, PhD advisor, um, so I'm involved in the PhD recruitment process as well. I'm Professor Tom Little. Uh, I work in the Institute of Evolutionary Biology, and I also supervise PhD students and do some undergraduate teaching. Well, we have to look at your grades, and they have to be high. But then we also look at your experience and your research proposal, or, or at least your statement of research interest. And what we're looking for there is a love of the science. I think there's a few things that we sort of look for. One of the things I think is really nice is if somebody's got in touch themselves right at the beginning and said, perhaps, I've seen some of your research and they've been interested by it. They've envisaged something that they could do that fits in with what you're doing, and they've already got in touch and you've started that conversation. If you don't have a lot of... Uh, uh, research experience, you might be able to show us that you read around a lot, that you understand the topic that you're applying for, and you read around other topics as well, so that you are loving the science and really deeply engaged with uh, knowing everything you can about the biological world. The CV, I think, is important. It gives you the opportunity to, to show what your strengths are in your academic work, but we're also looking at more than just that, because a, a PhD often calls in quite different skills from perhaps getting good marks in exams. Be prepared, I'd say. So I think most interviews you go along to, there's going to be a sort of standard set of, of questions. They might get asked in slightly different ways, but it's the same sort of things that you're being asked for. So the sorts of things you might get asked are to describe some of your previous research and how you've gone about doing that, how you've tackled problems you've come across, and um, why you're interested in the PhD you're doing. If there's any point in it where you're not sure what you're being asked, then you know, uh, any sort of interview is a two-way conversation, so ask for clarification. If you're loving the science and are enthusiastic about the science and have been reading around and have some experience, all you need to do is be yourself and display that to us. We want to see enthusiastic, knowledgeable people. And bear in mind also, there's very little to get nervous about because we want the best out of you and you want to give us the best. So everybody actually has the same goals. Research experience definitely helps. So if you can have been doing something in the summer uh, or have had a job or whatever, that's great. It's not always possible. Sometimes you might have to volunteer. As a minimum, you will have done an honors research project and you will have done very well in that and you will have displayed during your work on that again the love of the science so get whatever experience you can because it certainly won't hurt but we understand and we're realistic about how much experience everybody is poss can possibly have. I think the more research experience you have the better not just because it gives you a set of skills and so on that you can talk about but just um, let you get familiar with what the research process is. But I think most people will get an opportunity to get some sort of research experience during their degree. So you can use that research experience, for example, at interview to illustrate why you're interested in research and um, what it is about the research process that you enjoy. Yes, it's definitely um, an advantage, but there are many different ways you can get that research experience, both within your degree programme and alongside your, your de degree programme as well. I don't think it is at all. Um, it can be useful in that it gives you more research experience and more skills that you can pull on, but I think equally useful would be going and gaining some research experience in other research groups or in other projects. So I think there are different ways of getting the sort of things that a, a master's would give you. A master's is not necessary. It can make you, make you look good on paper, but we do strive to identify potential in applicants who have only done an undergrad. Not at all. Um, in fact, in the last round of PhD applications, we had social scientists, um, people from other sciences, particularly maths, and also an architect as well, who had come back and was interested in planning and ecology and had got more into the sort of research side down that route. Does it matter if you're from a biology background? No, it doesn't. We actually uh, take an interest in people who might come from physics 
or chemistry and have become interested in biology because it shows a real curiosity. And often we understand that these people from different backgrounds will bring something new to the field. So we definitely take a close look at people from other backgrounds. One of the things about biology is it's a very um, multidisciplinary subject. And um, if anything, we're keen to encourage people in that sort of different sets of skills that can use those to ask biological questions in different ways. The key thing, I think, is to be prepared. Um, you know what information you have to give, so practice that. The presentation we ask you to give is on some research that you've done. So if you did that research, if you were involved in that research, if you were loving the research, again, and that's a theme that keeps coming up, all we're asking you to do is talk to us about that research and explain what you did. You might want to do a little bit of research on the supervisor, see that they're productive, see that they're funded and all those things. Um, but basically it's up to what, it comes down to what interests you. That's so important, getting the right, um, not just project, not just supervisor, but the whole research environment is really important. It's where you're going to spend the next three or four intense years of your life. I would say get in touch with potential supervisors early on, way before the application process, and start getting to know them. Another um, place to go to advice is to ask your lecturers, who do you know that isn't just doing good science, but also provides a, a supportive environment for their research group and PhD students. I think doing a PhD really equips you with an awful lot of skills that are just generally applicable. So um, you're taking a project, you're taking ownership of it, you're working out how to set about um, project planning it. If you come to Edinburgh and do a PhD, you will be trained to be a scientist by top scientists in the world. So you will become a scientist, but that means a number of things and I'd like to be clear about that. If you become a scientist, of course you're a specialist in your area. You will become an immunologist, you will become a geneticist, etc., etc. But there's a more important thing that you get out of it, right? You become somebody who can understand a question, design an experiment, analyze an experiment, write a report on that experiment, and bring some truth to the world. You're learning skills about how to interact with people, how to collaborate. You're um, operating on an international scale. So I think there's a whole set of skills that you get from doing a PhD alongside just learning the process of doing good research and becoming a good scientist that would prepare you whether you're interested in, in staying in science and doing cutting edge science yourself or, or taking that knowledge out and using it in the wider community for social good and how we use science in our in our day to day environment. So even if you don't continue on to be the geneticist or the immunologist you become, you have acquired design, analysis and project management skills that can be applied to almost any job and that's a really valuable commodity.